And I just want to tell you, it doesn't matter what your age is, whether you're in eighth grade or a senior in high school or whether you're in college. December academics are just hard. Do you feel it? It's oh, like yes. climbing a mountain of mud. So I just want to say, we are going to make it to the end of this week. I'm not pushing you to the cliff of adulthood. I'm just giving you perspective, okay? There's Leah. This. My question is, why does like, Cole, does Cole have like classes for like finance and management and like things like, they have, have a, like pay bills and like stuff like that? They have a really good elective in um, rhetoric school like about management. managing money and I'm both sure. my boys took it. It's great. It's great. It's based on Dave Ramsey. It's really good. It benefited oh, my kids. I should probably do that. Yeah. You you need it. You need it. Okay, Alex. I saw the stand of this kid. He is uh, 15 and he is already in college studying quantum physics. That is crazy. Um, that's it's not good. Good. I'm not that. Santa opened the door. So this weekend we saw this amazing we saw this amazing movie about a guy who played football at Clemson. He graduated in three years, played football, and then went to Harvard. And if you guys have not seen Disney's new movie, Safety, oh, I know. It's, it's, where you're about. It is, it's a football movie, but it's, it's based more, on a true story. It's based on a true story. If you ever saw The Blind Side, it oh, was kind of like that. I like The Titans. That was my movie. Oh, remember The Titans is my monster yeah. movie. The music is great. The story is great. The acting is great. I need to get on campus trying to make it look like well, you'll, you'll find not gonna work. and a lot more. Okay, Andrew. Is it a really sad movie? Um, no. I mean, it is gripping. It's got a lot of poignant parts in it, but it's a very positive movie. And even if you're not a Clemson fan, um, it, it's just great. It's really great. So I would recommend that. If you love football, you'll especially love it. But even if you don't love football, you would like it. Okay, guys, can we go over this? My goal is that you have a computer on your desk in 15 minutes. I really want to give you the majority of class to write your intro. We're going to go over these answers. So I'm going to read them to you. Would you, If you will listen and save your questions, then we're going to go over very quickly the outlining. We'll do this in five minutes. So. You were supposed to underline the Jaren or Jaren phrase. So number one, you should have underlined a modest beginning. So remember, a Jaren, verb plus ing, it's used as a noun. Any compliments, any modifiers go with it. So a modest describes beginning. Number two, you should have underlined dancing with amateur groups. If you underline the preposition, this is one of those gray um, grammar areas of like some will underline the preposition, some won't. But you for sure should have gotten dancing with amateur groups. Number three, you should have underlined leaping like a gazelle. Number four, leaving Moscow. Okay, Andrew, put that computer down right now, okay? And this is to prepare you for the quiz tomorrow. So you're tomorrow? looking at this. Oh gosh. Five, you should have underlined praising his performances. Okay, six, wild cheering. Again, if you underline the prepositions, that's fine. Number seven, you should have underlined watching his impossibly high leaps. Number eight, his dancing. Number nine, driving in a crowded city. Number 10, humming that tune. Now, being able to recognize these is the number one thing that's gonna be on that quiz tomorrow. So do you have any questions about words that were included that made it a Jaren phrase? Well, do you think we could have another day for the quiz? I don't know if we're ready. Yeah, like a review tomorrow that did the Ask me, so. ask me more questions, and then I'll make that assessment. Uh, Back up. Okay, so when it's <laughs> on number eight, like it's like his dancing. Um, why wouldn't you do like? I would have thought it'd be like dancing is known. Like I just okay. Why you that is his? such a great question. So the first thing I want to say is that a gerund phrase will never have a verb in it. So is is a verb. So just file that away. There will be no verbs. And then it's any words that describe or clarify the gerund. So we need to know it's whose dancing is it. It's his dancing. So like when you're underlining, like if you have a gerund and then a prepositional phrase, it's because the prepositional phrase is modifying the gerund? Typically. Okay. So you just have, at the first step is underline the gerund 
And then go, are there any words that are describing the gerund or clarifying its meaning? Matt? Uh, what was the gerund, um, gerund or gerund phrase for the 10? For number 10, humming that tune. Okay, how do you get that tune? Okay, so you couldn't say, she could not stop that tune. That tune doesn't go with stop. That tune goes with humming. Humming what? That tune. So that is a, um, that's actually a compliment. It helps you understand the humming. It gives you more information about the humming. What are the Jared questions? There are no Jared questions. It's just a verb plus ing used as a noun. Now, hold on. Andrew, you know that the sign of brilliance is asking good questions, and Matt is yeah. asking good questions. Uh, I'm not answering. Okay. Yeah. So hold on. What you should be asking is, what are the noun jobs? So a gerund could be what? Just raise your hand. If it, it could be what? She could be a noun. I mean, a no. subject. A subject. A direct object. And a positive. An object is preposition. An indirect object. A object complement noun. No, no, we're not going to, no. Okay, but that was really good. He can do all of those. And the main things I'm focusing on are direct objects, objects of a preposition, and subject, and the predicate and object. Okay. Andrew. Are you going to have sentences and sandwiches today? <laughs> not having sentences and sandwiches today. Wait, what is that a problem? She says she wants to say she is. She is. Um, what? What was, um, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. What was number nine? And what was, um, number four? Number nine, driving in a crowded city. So, so driving, we're in a crowded city. That's describing the driving. But we're driving to the subject. The whole thing, that, this is important, the whole phrase acts as a subject. So, so driving in a crowded city, the whole thing acts as a subject. Here's, and this is where I stopped, okay? Whoa. Driving, that whole thing is a subject, where in a city, a crowded city. So the entire phrase goes up on the stilts and it acts as the subject. Even since it has a prepositional phrase, it can be a subject? It's, it, if it's in the gerund phrase, that whole thing is oh. coming off of this subject spot. Just like here, this whole thing is a direct object. This whole thing is the subject. So all the words in the phrase, if you have to write that down, write it down. The whole gerund phrase has a noun job. Okay, Hudson, does that make sense? It may be weird. You may not like it. And yet it is true. The whole gerund phrase has the, Wait, the whole gerund phrase what? Um, has a noun job. I don't understand the predicate nominal. Okay, is there one you're looking at? Because there's a lot of them here. Well, uh, just yeah. just but it usually just, it just cool. like the D, it's just like a D-O, except it comes after it to be verb. Exactly. It comes after. So if you see, let's look at number three. One of his skills was leaping like a gazelle. So subject one verb was and you go oh that's a linking verb i should be looking for a predicate adjective or a predicate nominative so leaping like a gazelle now i have to go does that describe one of his skills or does it replace well if it's a gerund it has to be a predicate nominative if it comes after a linking verb and it's a gerund it is a predicate nominative and here's how number three how about this diagram one was, was what? Leaping and like with a preposition, like a gazette, okay? And I should have put this other skills here. I just didn't fill that in yet. Okay, other questions? No. Amelia. Um, like, do you need to post something on Google Classroom that like you can practice if you? Yeah, learning? so you can practice 11 through 18, mm -hmm. okay? And I will post the answers for that. So this, they've already underlined it for you, and you have to identify what's the noun job it's doing. And that's the second part of the quiz. If the main thing, if I had to say, this quiz is gonna be a whole lot like the sheet we checked on Friday. Mm -hmm. Underline the gerund phrase, say what the, the um, noun job is. You will have two to diagram. So diagramming is not going to be a main focus, but I'd like you to diagram it. Okay? Uh, do we need to know like the definition of 
Do I usually ask for that definition? To me, definitions are like a gimme. It's a way I can give you something easy that you can get points for. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mariah, what's a Jared?
Um, or maybe use the word became, became a well-known movie star, or um, established the United States. Maybe you put a different word besides accomplishments, but it is suggesting what was the biggest thing that they achieved during their lifetime. Mm -hmm. I don't actually have achieved either. Me too. Okay, well these are all the cues I have. Now, does everybody else, we've, we're all on the same page, okay. So, you're just putting something here that, that speaks to their chief accomplishment. Or maybe you want to change this and say, um, she became an, or he became an accomplished basketball player. So you could use accomplished as an adjective. Becca. Could I say um, accomplished a career of child acting and later life politics? Um, I think that's going to strain it. I think I'd just say became an outstanding movie star okay. and um, political leader. Okay. So yeah. Like that I said, you could put more than one thing. Can you put that one? But I can still use accomplished in that? If you want, or you okay. can just use the word became. Okay. And left a legacy of. And you have got um, remembered. What does it say, Amelia? An influence. An influence. Okay. You can use the word influence or remembered, but I like this left a legacy. So left a legacy of excellence in sports, left an ex a legacy of political um, political influence. Something about what are they remembered for? Left a legacy in the entertainment industry. Okay, so you're thinking again, this is what they're remembered for. Here's what they accomplished. What are they remembered for today? Okay. Now, I want to give you um, a sample. Now, this is where we go back to keywords. Because, um, well, actually, let's hold off on this. Let's look at writing your introduction. So, you guys have this sheet. This is the double sheet that's on your desk. So, you've got your thesis. When you're writing an introduction, you always want to start with your thesis. So you've got a shell of a thesis, you've got a template. Andrew, you should be looking at this. Okay. So the very first thing, and I think I gave something like this to you maybe earlier in the semester, um, but an intro has three purposes. You're gonna capture the reader's attention. Now, this one I had written about Thomas Jefferson. So all the examples are about Thomas Jefferson. Ask a question, give a fact, or startling statistic. Use a series of fragments or three very short sentences. Make an imagined statement. Use a quotation. Use an anecdotal opener, which is a story. Or relate, that should have an R on the front of that, relate to modern culture. These are all ideas. You can read them, hopefully, because you've done research. You already know, oh yeah, there was that great quote. Or that was that great statistic. He produced 53 movies in 20 years. So um, hopefully there's something here that is gonna capture your attention already. Okay, next page. You're gonna give important background information. Now this is where many of you have felt like this essay, this assignment's kind of restrictive because you're talking about challenges and accomplishments and legacy, but where do you put who they married and how many kids they had. Where, where do you put the basic biographical information? Well, one answer is you're not gonna include all of it. But the second answer is you're going to put it in your introduction. If there's anything you want somebody to know, you would put in the introduction. So you can look on this, that I wanted people to know Thomas Jefferson was born in 1743 in Virginia. He grew up on Tuckahoe Plantation, went to law school at a young age, became active in colonial Virginia's politics, when the American colonies began having conflict with Great Britain, Thomas Jefferson was a firm believer in independence. So notice, I didn't think that I needed to say who he married, because that's going to be under challenges when his wife died. I didn't need to give um, statistics about where he went to college or who his friends were, or any of that. I just gave a little bit of background. Does that make sense? So you're going to put a little bit of background, and then you're going to have your thesis. 
So opener, background, thesis. So let's look up here very quickly. And you have this. Um, there's two, and I want to start with this one with Thomas Jefferson, okay? Because this is an anecdotal opener. And I want to show you this because if you <coughs> give an anecdotal opener, you don't want to start with a long story. So young Thomas Jefferson tramped up the mountain to the large plantation he called home. You've got this in front of you if you want to read it. He had diligently studied all day and now reveled in the beauty of rural Virginia. As he removed his coat in the hallway, Thomas was greeted with tragic news. His father had died. At the young age of 14, Thomas unexpectedly became the man of his home. Okay, so that's my little antidote. Um, despite this early tragedy, Thomas Jefferson would continue with his studies. He would graduate from college at age 19, become an attorney. He would become governor of a state, an outstanding figure in American history. Thomas Jefferson overcame many difficulties, so I've highlighted the key words, throughout his life to become a talented writer, skilled diplomat, and accomplished president who is still remembered today for his political influence. Okay, Addison, yes, can you pick your head up, please? Okay, thank you. Do you guys have any questions about this? How are we gonna write our intro if we don't have our uh, stuff, our sources? Because you told us to do keyword outlines for only our paragraphs, not our intro. Right. So, that's a good question. So one is, some of you have already put stuff in. You were like, ah, oh, I know I want this in my intro. But you do have your sources here. So we can. Okay? So you can use those sources to outline, like sketch your introduction. Um, I do not want your source, you should not be writing from your sources. But you can use your sources to sketch out your intro, Amy. Okay, so for, um, are we ever going to fill in the can use your sources oh, I we were to fill in your outline. Some people have already done that. That's why this is kind of like the launching into writing your intro. But if you have not, then go ahead and sketch out a couple of things, okay? Now remember, your, your outline is being submitted with your paper. So that part of the outline should be completed. The most important thing is whatever you wrote down for the thesis, you're gonna put that in. You have an A, which is an opener, a B, which is background information, probably a one, two, three <coughs> under that, and then a C, which is your thesis. Yeah. Okay, so I like started mine, but I was like realizing I gotta look at both of these, and mine is nothing, like it's nowhere like I want to grab. So okay, so these are samples, so you can show it to me. The main thing is, I don't expect you to write one just like mine, I'm trying to give you an idea, okay? So if you've written something that has an opener or background information that doesn't look like that, that's fine. The key thing is you need to have these keywords, challenges, accomplishments, legacy, because that ties to each of your topic sentences. Uh-huh. Okay, so on the board it says the paper due with the revised outline is due on uh, Thursday. Thursday. I'm change that to Okay, when is like the final paper due? After Christmas, I'll give you Okay, so we'll, we'll have like Christmas to write it? No, 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 oh. no. You're not doing anything over Christmas. Um, you need to relax. But it's you on the 17th. That's with the... That's Thursday. I'm, I haven't outline. changed my board. I'm telling you now, it's due on Friday. Wait. Now, the only thing that's difficult for you guys is some of you aren't coming on Friday and we've got wreaths across America. How okay. long does that last? On, on Friday. I just, so you're gonna have to manage your time a little bit more, but you may drop it off on Friday, okay? I'm not really like, sure what our class schedule looks like if I see you on Friday. But before you leave on Friday, you can drop it off. Drop off the... Your rough draft with your revised outline. Wait, how long Oh, uh, we have to have a rough draft of the paper. Is it a full paper or just the introduction rough draft? No, it's the, it's the you're writing the paper. Conclusion. We're going to do conclusion mark. Okay? So why don't we do this? You guys get your computers, start working. An intro should not take very long. No, 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 no. I just, I Yeah. 
Yeah. You want to put that line also? Thank you.